Chinese and Western airline manufacturers battle for the business of Southeast Asian travelers. Hello and welcome to VOA Asia Weekly. I'm Jessica Stone in Washington. We'll get to that story in just a moment, but first, making headlines. Flooding and landslides in northern Vietnam have killed three people, state media said Monday. They were triggered by high water on the Low River after days of heavy rain, which has submerged homes, overturned vehicles, and stranded residents. South Korea and the United States held their third nuclear consultative group meeting. The nations agreed to a series of tabletop exercises to work on interoperability, communication, and joint decision making. The South Korean military says soldiers fired warning shots over the weekend after North Korean troops briefly crossed the border. Thailand's constitutional court has set a hearing date for next Tuesday on whether to dissolve the election win of the Move Forward Party. The MFP is accused of campaigning on a promise to reform the royal defamation law in violation of the Thai constitution. If the election is overturned, it nullifies the votes of 14 million people. The Philippines celebrated its Independence Day Wednesday, marking 145 years since Manila declared independence from Spain. On the eve of the holiday, hundreds of Filipino activists marched towards the Chinese consulate in Manila, protesting China's aggressive militarization on the disputed shoals of the West Philippine Sea, also known as the South China Sea. And the oldest member of K-pop group BTS was discharged from the South Korean Army on Wednesday. Jin is the first member of the group to trade in his music for 18 months of mandatory military service. He was greeted by rapper RM playing the group's hit single, Dynamite, on the saxophone. A Chinese aircraft manufacturer is actively marketing its commercial jet internationally, trying to compete with the likes of Airbus and Boeing. But as VOA's Ahadian Utama reports, the aircraft manufacturer has an uphill battle to dominate Asian skies. Indonesia's aviation market is the second fastest growing in the world, next to China, according to the U.S. International Trade Administration. Enter the state-owned commercial aircraft corporations of China, or COMEC for short. Beijing is showing off its new single aisle jet, the C919, and looking to muscle in on a business dominated by U.S. and European aerospace giants Boeing and Airbus. Bayu Sutanto, the Secretary General of the Indonesian National Air Carriers Association, says that there are opportunities for China in this part of the world. There are opportunities because the aviation industry is dynamic and each nation's needs are also different and cannot be met by a single provider or one type of aircraft. COMEC went on a promotional tour to six Southeast Asian nations, including Indonesia, in February and March. Aviation analyst Delphine Lee says COMEC might be hoping to take advantage of safety and supply issues impacting Boeing and Airbus. Boeing is experiencing problems with safety issues, while Airbus has a long queue production. To be able to bring an Airbus, the waiting time can be up to five years. This is a good opportunity for the COMEX C919, whose capacity is equivalent to the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737. But to be able to operate in other countries, the plane must be certified by its country's local civil aviation authority. And so far, no countries in Southeast Asia have certified the C919. Lee says COMEX's smaller plane, the ARJ21, has been certified by Indonesia's civil aviation authority and that could make new certification easier. If you're familiar with the manufacturer, it becomes more familiar. The process is faster, but the procedure is all the same. Boeing predicts the numbers of commercial aircraft flying in Southeast Asia could quadruple to more than 4,000 jets in less than 20 years, and China is pushing to make sure its planes will be among them. Ahadian Utama, VOA News, Jakarta, Indonesia. And finally, in the heart of Glodok, Indonesia's largest Chinatown, Kopiastiki, a coffee shop, has been operating for almost 100 years. Yang Ming Zhou is now the third generation running the business. Today, the Chinatown thrives as a commercial hub, with Chinese Indonesians owning diverse businesses. To watch more Chinatown past, present, and future stories, you can visit voanews.com backslash Chinatowns. Thanks for watching VOA Asia Weekly.